Apple's latest iOS 16 software is here and I've already installed the developer beta on my test iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now here's a disclaimer for those who are watching the video and using an iPhone, don't install it on your primary device because there are some bugs and issues and you will face some problems along the way. Wait for the public beta which will launch about a month later from now if you are really really anxious. Anyway, if you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad, you're watching Track and Tech English and this is a hands-on with the new iPhone iOS 16 and all the new features that you get with it. Now the very first feature that I want to talk about is not the lock screen. I actually want to talk about the fact that you finally get haptic feedback on the default keyboard. Oh my god, that was a long time coming. Of course, those who are already using iOS probably already know that Gboard offers haptic feedback on iOS. But, you know, now you get that on the default keyboard as well. And I tested it out. The vibration feedback is not as strong as Gboard's, but I actually like it. I think it's tuned better. Unfortunately, you can't change the vibration, uh, you know, intensity though. Now, obviously, the one thing that Apple started off with is a completely revamped lock screen page. And it looks really, really good. Trust me, in real life, it looks even better. So basically, you can change the wallpaper directly from the lock screen now. And you can create different themes for different situations as well. Plus, you can link different focus modes for each of these themes too. And there are a lot of wallpapers to choose from. These dynamic wallpapers with live weather effects and of course the live earth as well looks damn cool. But my favorite is one where you can actually add a portrait photo from your uh, you know photos album and change the background as well. That's really, really cool. Apart from that, on the lock screen, you can now add widgets too, which is a swipe from the left. And more importantly, all the notifications now come at the bottom of the screen, which means that no more clutter. You just have to pull it from the bottom to the top to see all the notifications in one place. And just like lock screen customizations, you can customize the color of the subscribe button as well. Once you click it, it turns from red to gray. Do it, go ahead guys, please support us. And if you like our videos, don't forget to hit that like button and maybe even comment below for the sake of the YouTube algorithm. Now there are a couple of updates to the messages app as well. I know that most Indians don't use it. 99% of Indians use WhatsApp, but for those who use iMessages, these updates are actually pretty nifty. The one thing you can do right now is once you send a message and you realize that, oh, that's not the message that you wanted to send, you can actually undo it immediately. But of course, there is a time frame for which you can do that. You cannot go and do that for all your old messages. And you can also edit your recent messages, which is done very well. Another feature that I found really interesting is now you can get live text in video as well, but you'll have to stop at a frame to actually, you know, select the text and copy paste it, do translation in real time, all of those things. Apple is working very hard on spotlight search across all of its operating systems, which is basically Mac OS, iOS and iPad OS as well. And now spotlight search is just above the dock. It's available for direct access. And I find that really useful. And you can also swipe down to invoke the spotlight search as you could do before and if you don't like that you know toggle above the dock you can actually switch it off too. Now the next feature I think a lot of people will appreciate is the fact that you can now have face ID lock inside the photos app for your recently deleted and a new hidden folder as well. While also testing the device I noticed that Apple has added an easy method to now manage all the Wi-Fi networks that you have previously connected to. All you need to do is head into Wi-Fi hit the edit button on the top right and you'll see all the uh, you know Wi-Fi networks that you have connected to and you can delete them one by one and I realized I have a ton of them actually connected to so I had to you know do a bit of a purge and talking about Wi-Fi you can also see the Wi-Fi password for any Wi-Fi SSID that you have ever connected to and for that you need to actually go into that specific Wi-Fi SSID and you will see that the Wi-Fi you know password has actually been blocked out and you'll click on it and then you'll see that it'll ask for a face ID and immediately show you the Wi-Fi password obviously I'm not sure mine and you know what face id is now available not just in portrait but also in landscape orientation which i think is gonna come in really handy now i don't use the default mail app a lot but i like the fact that apple has actually added a lot of new features making me want to use it because it's got features that are available in gmail for example you can schedule mails now and you can also cancel the delivery of a mail in case you realize that you've made some mistake but of course there's only a very limited time frame for it and very importantly you can also set reminders within the app to respond to emails that you 
will want to respond to later. Another feature that Apple showcased at the WWDC launch event was dictation and typing, which works in tandem. Now with dictation, Apple has also made it more smart in that when you pause, it adds punctuations on its own as well, which is very good. But at the same time, you can dictate and type together, plus move your cursor around as well. All of that is really well done. You know, I'll have to use it regularly to figure out, uh, you know, how that works. But I think that over a period of time, we'll get used to it. Now, this has to be one of the coolest features in this new update, where you can just pick out the subject from the foreground, copy that and paste it in whatever app of your choice. You can put it in messages, notes, everything. Just, just copy it and move it around. How cool is that? Another feature that was actually a big feature of sorts is the iCloud shared photo library, which unfortunately is not available in this first beta edition. Now, this is obviously very similar to what Google already does with Google Photos. Uh, basically, what you can do is share a, a library directly from the camera app as well as you're taking the pictures and, you know, share it to library directly to a group of friends that maybe you're traveling with so that you don't have to worry about sharing the photos later. Generally, I'm the person who has to share the photos later and I do it like two, three months later. So this actually could be very, very useful. Siri has also gotten updated. Basically, Siri can now send messages directly without you having to say, yes, please send the message it will do it without you having to add that prompt you just have to say the message to the content that you want to send to and it sends it automatically and you can also use siri to hang up facetime calls or facetime videos when you are actually using maybe an airpods or an airpods max with it there are quite a few features with respect to fitness and health that apple announced at wwdc 2022 but the one that sort of caught my attention was the new medication feature what that essentially does is that you can add all the medications that you're taking if you're on medications that is and then you know you can keep that information saved plus it will give send you reminders on when you have to take your pills or uh, you know your cough syrup on time those are the things that are actually very very useful and nifty plus you can add the shape of the pill add a different background so that you can keep the distinguishing factor between all of them plus you can add the dosage uh, you know amount all of those things there's a lot on offer out here the next feature just like haptic feedback in the keyboard is something that a lot of you know old time iphone users will love is the fact that now you get foreground and background separation for objects as well. Apple has actually improved it and I tried it out and it looks very, very good. Apple has also upgraded the family sharing feature and added something called family checklist, which reminds you to add a few essential information, bits of information to, uh, you know, your family sharing group so that, you know, you don't miss out on those features. For example, you can do this, add a recovery contact, which was reminded, uh, you know, to me, which I feel is very, very useful is something that I definitely need to add soon. Also, there's this new developer mode. You know, it's not like the one on Android. It's just an option uh, which you, when you sort of switch on the toggle, allows you to install unsigned apps. Now, that's something that you have to do as a developer. And of course, Apple warns you that your, you know, security might be compromised as a result. Now, the final feature that I want to talk about is from Apple's upgrades to the privacy and, you know, security features on iOS 16. And this is one upgrade that I think that every single mobile operating system, including Android, should definitely include. Now, this feature is called Safety Check. What it essentially does is that it allows you to actually reset information that you have shared with certain family members if you think you are at risk. For people who have been in abusive relationships, know that this is a very, very important feature because you don't want to share your information with them if you specifically feel you are at risk. I think that this is a very, very useful feature and good job, Apple. But now while I've spoken about most of what's new on iOS 16, there's definitely a lot left to be explored. And there are a couple of features that I feel were missing and should be added at least in iOS 17 or probably in iOS 16 itself in one of the dot, uh, you know, one dot two updates. The first one is, yes, no always on display on iPhone yet. It has an AMOLED screen, but always on is not available. And I still can't understand why you cannot use split screen on, you know, uh, at least the iPhone 13 Pro Max. That is something that should come really soon to phones as well. It's very, very useful. Maybe there will be something soon, hopefully, uh, keeping my fingers crossed. But yeah, I mean, that's not available at the moment. So those were all the cool new features in iOS 16. I actually am enjoying using it a lot. Maybe I'll do a full review when the actual release happens later 
this fall, which is basically when you know the next iPhone launches about September, October. Which is your favorite iOS 16 feature? Do let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, this is Ashad signing off. Keep tracking and stay safe.